I wanted to first of all start off with um, what it means to me to be to be British and to care about our country, right? Um, because I think the fact that we raise concerns, it means that we care. The fact that we use our God-given mouths to say something, to go out there, to try to do something, to raise awareness, means that we do want change, right? Um, and that we also understand that change isn't something that comes overnight, right? Just like Rome wasn't built, you know, in a day, that change isn't something that comes overnight, but it is within us to build the, the Britain, the United Kingdom that we wanted to see. Now, I, I, I appreciate that today we are gathered, we are talking about different things, particularly to do with, um, with the monarchy and um, where are we going next. Um, I've always been very clear in my very humble opinion that I question, I, I question the point of having a monarchy today. Um, I mean, what I'm saying today in 2023 is what I would have said last year and the year before that, but that we've done so much and progressed so much as a society in the last several centuries, right, that today we really should be questioning what is the role of the monarchy in a progressive society, especially since every single hard-fought hard um, right has been has been won by by the people not by the, you know not by the monarch it wasn't at the imagination initiative or you know or push by any british monarchy whether it is workers rights women's rights but you know freedoms of all kinds they were all fought for by the ordinary um british people who, who i i say are not ordinary at all right um and then when you come from that perspective, we really need to be asking ourselves in 2023 that as we progress as a society, what role does the monarchy play? If this was ever put to a referendum, I think every single one of us will be able to cast a vote on what we think. Um, and I don't know if that will ever happen in our lifetime. We're not going to lose sleep over it as to whether or not this happens right now or happens tomorrow. But I think that the, the work being done in raising awareness as to what is the function of, of, of a monarch, what is the function of an unelected head of state that is unaccountable to the very people he or she is meant to serve? What, what is the purpose of that? And I don't think this, is, this comes from a bad place or an angry place, but it should come from a place of passion, a place where we rightfully go, listen, when we put people in positions of power, which the head of state is in, we expect them to be accountable to us for everything. They, they should be held to the highest scrutiny. Um, but that this is one arm. It is one arm of institutional power in the UK that we, have, we seem to have no say on. Um, and legally, they have all kinds of legal exemptions from all kinds of um, discrimination you can possibly think of. Sex, you know, sex discrimination, race discrimination, things that you and I cannot be exempt from. And it just, it makes no sense to me. I, I don't know about you, but it makes no sense to me. Nobody should be above the law. Nobody should be above being held to account. Um, and I think that it's either as a people we say, look, it is time to reshape. I, I don't know how you can possibly reshape the monarchy, right? But it is time for the monarchy to do A, B, C, or it is time for us to have a different understanding of what a head of state is. Um, now, when the when the queen passed away, um, and you know, many people uh, came together because. You know, as many of you would agree, um, Queen Elizabeth existed for you know all of our lives. As we, when we were born, she was here. You know what I mean? And she lived to ninety-six. So, for a lot of us, particularly me, I realized when she passed away that oh my goodness, I've only known one Queen of England. So the, the, that was a change in history, right? And, and and I'm sure I'm sure many people felt that. Of course, we all have different. Um, we have we all have different ways of um, 
analyzing and deconstructing what that means to you personally. But I think one of the things that I found when she passed away was that while I was, I was trying to be respectful of those who deeply mourned her passing, um, what I found, I, I found I couldn't be quiet about were those who were whitewashing her legacy. And that for me was why I went, okay, th this is part of the problem here. When you start to whitewash legacies, then you are, you are rewriting history. You are rewriting um, the, the, the legacy of the last colonial queen. You are rewriting, uh, you know, the, the, the impact of the, that, the impact on the role of the British uh, monarchy in the transatlantic slave trade. You're, 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 you're trying to revise history in the fact that in what is today a multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-faith society, there hasn't really been a significant role in, to my mind, that the monarchy has played to drive that. Because all of that happened, it, it happened with or without them. I, the good that we can see is what I'm saying. So today I feel like there has to be a real question and a real drive around, okay, what role exactly does the, does the present monarch play? What, where, what is it that as a society we want to see going forward? And that we should not be afraid to ask these questions. We shouldn't be afraid to raise our voices and say, listen, you need to hear me. Um, what may have happened and, and succeeded 500 years ago has stopped being relevant a very, very long time ago. Um, you know, we talked about a cost of living crisis and then we spent hundreds of millions on a, on a coronation. That, for the life of me, that just did not make sense, right? Um, we talk about the, the kind of people try to use words like soft power that the monarch has. And I, and I go, okay, you're gaslighting because they don't have soft power. They have real power. But the problem has been that for, for, you know, for all the times that I've known and history shows us that the power that the British monarch has consistently used has never actually been on behalf of the people it's meant to serve, it's a, it has always used that power for itself. You know, you can agree to disagree with me, because to me, the only thing the, the British monarchy seems to have really succeeded at is its own survival. So this is not about hating the monarchy. No, I don't. I don't even have the energy. This is not about. Um, I, mean, I need to reserve my energy for other things. Is what I'm trying to say. This is not about trying to be overly negative people, please. No, that's not what we're trying to concentrate on here. We're talking about progress. We're talking about a, a forward thinking society. We're talking about the role that a head of state plays. And I genuinely, hand on heart, I just don't see the role that a, a British monarch plays today. And some people try to say, oh my word, you know, they bridge the gap. I'm like, they can't be the bridge that bridges the gap when they are the divide. They exemplify the structural inequalities in our country. What the heck are you talking about? You know? And um, and I think people, some people want to see it as divisive. And again, this is nonsense. It's not divisive to raise questions about structural power in our own country. I mean, what did, what do we do when we get sick and tired? of political parties that run our countries to ground. What do we do? We kick them out. <laughs> we hold them to account. One way or the other, we find a way to hold them to account. And usually it's by using your legs, walking over to where you need to vote, and you vote them out. But when it comes to the hierarchical power of, of the monarch, it seems we can't question them. We can't hold them to account. You know, um, recollections may vary. All of that nonsense. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Well, we no longer live in an age where people are uneducated, illiterate. We, we, we no longer live in a, you know, in a society where you need, I don't know, the bishop to interpret the Bible for you to understand what God is saying to you, or that um, you, you, you cannot apply deductive reason. We, we, we no longer live in such a time. So why are we allowing this to carry on. Um, I expect the head of state 
if we have one, to be accountable to us. Now, there, there, there is, there's some who put out the argument out there about how much money, how much money and revenue the British monarchy brings us. I'm like, kidding me? I think that, uh, you know, people go to France, go visit the, the palaces there, the Versailles, and they make more money than we do. And, and when, when tourists come over here, they don't see the king or queen. What do they do? They simply go to a palace, they trudge along, they go, ooh, ah, uh, Cantona. Okay, maybe they don't say Cantona, but you know what I mean. They look at all of the portraits, blah, blah, blah. You don't need a king or queen for that. We will still have the palaces. We can still have state, you know, banquets, like, you know, in other countries. I, again, this is not about hating the British monarchy. That's not what this is about. This is really about using, um, if, we, if we genuinely live in a democratic society, then I am using my democratic rights to actively question <laughs> the point of having a head of state that is not accountable to me. I, I just don't get it. I, and I meant to do Lord this, King that, Your Majesty that. I know for some, these might be, um, this might just be words, but they're actually words that carry meaning, they carry power. And if, if, if it was that we had a monarch who was almost like the, um, let me put it this way, so when the government messes up, we know that the monarchy can step in and do what, you know, do the needful. Never happens because apparently the monarchy can't do anything. The monarch can't do anything. They're meant to shut the heck up, except when they want power, except when they want exemptions, except when they want something for themselves. And then when we do all the hard work, they benefit from the hard, you know, hard fought rights. I mean, think about it. People go, well, you know, Queen Elizabeth was um, a female head of state. And I, I'm like, and so, okay, and she was the, but she wasn't at the head of the women's rights match at any period of time throughout her ruling at all. She didn't do jack all to make it possible for women to have better positions, nothing. And, and her existence as head of state only benefited her and her family. Again, this doesn't mean I, I dislike Queen Elizabeth for that. I think what Queen Elizabeth did was to do exactly what was expected of her. That was, that was what she was meant to follow and she followed it to a T. That's what she did. So when people come up with, oh, she's so iconic or she was so iconic, to whom, how? <laughs> and people go, oh, you know, and you know, growing up as, as a young girl, I'm like, no, just stop right there. There is no young girl in the United Kingdom that looked up to, the, to, to Queen Elizabeth and thought, one day I'm going to be just like her. Nobody thought that, and most definitely not a black or brown girl, because we all knew we, we could not be queen, one, two. What was her job exactly? There were other women, other women, who were breaking down barriers, becoming engineers, becoming lawyers, doing things that, oh my goodness, that were truly, that were truly um, making it possible for women to dream big. I don't think there's anything that King Charles has done that someone goes, oh my God, they are going to be just like King Charles. No, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. So who exactly are they an icon for? Tell me. And then people go, you know, they do have a lot of engagement. And I'm like, okay, you know, I would love to have the engagement. <laughs> I would love to have the engagement of getting up in the morning, Somebody gets me up. So I'm already preparing my breakfast, and all I need to do is go shake hands and read out a speech that somebody else has already written for me. People, please. I, I, it, it almost feels like, and I, I put my, head, my hand on my head like this, because it, it just beggars belief the, um, how low the standard of expectation is. I'm like, when people are up here, my standard expectation of them is up here. And I, I can't, for the life of me, I can't go, oh my God, he just looked my way, the king just looked at me. <laughs> so is he Jesus Christ? I mean, he, he's, he, he's able to turn my life around. Oh my God, they just shook me head. Again, look, I am not trying to belittle anybody that genuinely, you know, fawns over um, royalty, you know, good for you. But at least, at least, please, as a society, let us have 
a sense of expectation that people in these positions must earn the right, not by birth, but by hard work, same as you and I. I need to stop that because you know what? <laughs> the lawyer and Nigerian in me and the woman in me will just keep talking if you don't stop me. <laughs> Charlotte, thank you so much.